Hey guys, it's Ms. Gibson, and the book we're going to read today is called Building Bridges. It's written by Kathy Fergang, and again, this is a nonfiction book, and it's something that we already know a little bit about. So I know you guys know what bridges are. You see them every day. You've driven across them. You've walked across them, but do you really know anything about bridges? Well, this book is going to tell us about five different types of bridges, and it's going to show us how they're built, what they're made of, and what they look like. So I hope you like it. We're going to start by looking at our front inside cover. First, we see our big idea. People, using scientific principles, have invented ways to make travel faster, easier, and more convenient. And our social studies objectives. Identify the different types of bridges. Describe how each type of bridge supports weight. Explain the challenges and benefits of building bridges. Then consider this. Have you ever seen the Brooklyn Bridge or the Golden Gate Bridge? These are just two of the famous bridges in America. Bridges all over the world help people cross over water quickly and efficiently. Think of the bridges that you've seen. How are they alike? How are they different? Take a second and think about that. Then let's look at our content vocabulary. Abutment, bridge, hasten, engineer, force, pier, span. For our next page, we can see our title, Building Bridges, by Kathy Fergane. And we have a table of contents. It shows us that we're going to have an introduction, five chapters, conclusion, glossary, and an index. Let's get started. Introduction. On a hike through the woods, you come across a small stream. How can you cross it without getting wet? Build a bridge. The first bridges in the world were probably logs placed across streams. A bridge engineer would call the top of the log the roadway of the bridge. It is the part of the bridge on which traffic travels. Every bridge, no matter how small or large, no matter how simple or complex, has a roadway. In this book, you will learn about five types of bridges. You will find out how they are built, how they work, and how people design them. And if we look at our pictures, we can see those five bridges. Beam bridge, arch bridge, movable bridge, suspension bridge, and a cable stayed bridge. The strength needed for a bridge depends on the type of traffic that will cross it. Chapter one, beam bridges. Beam bridges are the simplest bridges, the ones most like a log across a stream. The bridge in the photograph is a beam bridge. Builders sank two wooden piers in the river to support the bridge. Then they set the beam in place from one bank to the other between the piers. Finally, they laid the roadway on top of the beam. This is the basic design of all beam bridges. The piers support the bridge and everything on it. And if we look at our picture, it shows us that piers support a roadway on a beam bridge by resisting the downward force of gravity. We can see each part of the beam bridge. The beam, the piers, the span, and the roadway. Bridge builders must know exactly how much weight a bridge can hold. Weight is a measure of the force of gravity. This force pulls downward on a bridge. The beam bridge's piers resist the force of gravity. Weight makes the beam bend. If the distance between piers is too great, the beam may bend so much that it breaks. This distance is called the span. Most other types of bridges are designed to make the span longer and keep the beam from bending. If we look at our page insert, we can see a project. Be a bridge builder. Make your own beam bridge. Place a strip of poster board, the beam, across two cans, the piers. How many toy cars can the bridge hold? Add another pier by putting a third can under the center of the beam. How many cars can the bridge hold now? And we can see a diagram describing just that. We're actually going to do that project a little later, so be on the lookout. The Lake Pontchartrain Causeway Bridge in New Orleans, Louisiana is a beam bridge. The span of a beam bridge must be kept short, so engineers joined many short spans to make the longest overwater bridge in the world. We can see a picture of the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway Bridge is 24 miles long. The bridge has 2,243 spans. In the late 1960s, engineers built a second bridge alongside the first bridge. Now each direction of traffic travels on a separate roadway. 
the two bridges connect in seven places. The connections allow vehicles to switch between the roadways when traffic is heavy in one direction. And our page insert, it's a fact. Engineers strengthen beam bridges by adding to the basic design. They can add sections of steel and a pattern of triangles to stiffen the beam. This added part is called a truss. They can also add arms reaching out from the piers to help support the beam. These arms are called cantilevers. And we can see in our pictures, this railroad bridge in Russia, in Russia is a truss bridge. And the fourth bridge in Scotland is a cantilever bridge. Chapter two, arch bridges. Arch bridges are strong and solid. An arch is a curved shape that is naturally strong. It allows a longer span than a simple beam bridge. The downward force on the roadway follows along the arch. When the force reaches the end supports, or abutments, they resist it. The arch shape is especially good for crossing rivers because it leaves room for boats to go under the bridge. If we look at our picture, this arch bridge is made of stone. Today, most arch bridges are made of steel or concrete. You can see each part, the piers, the arch, the span, and the roadway. People have been building arch bridges for more than 5,200 years. In ancient China, an arch bridge was built out of wood and rope woven from strips of bamboo. Today's engineers still study its design, although the bridge is no longer standing. The first arch bridge made of metal was built in Shropshire, England in 1779. The 100-foot bridge became so famous it was known around the world simply as Iron Bridge. It still stands today. We can see a picture of that at the top of our page. Iron Bridge once carried coal, iron, and limestone across the Severn River. Today, it is used only as a walkway. The New River, located in Fayetteville, West Virginia, has a steep gorge or canyon. The gorge made travel very difficult until the New River Gorge Bridge was built. The bridge made it possible to cross the gorge in about a minute. At 3,030 feet, the bridge is the second longest steel single arch bridge in the world. The solid mountains on each side of the gorge are abutments for the arch. They provide the strength that allows the arch to be so long. Although the solid mountains on each side of the gorge would become the abutments, temporary towers were put up to help with the bridge construction. Builders used the towers to run cables across the gorge. Then they brought sections of the bridge over the gorge on trolleys that ran along the cables. Building the bridge took three years. The weight of all the steel used for the bridge was about 88 million pounds. That's heavier than 29,000 mid-sized cars. And we can see our picture. The New River Gorge Bridge rises 876 feet over the New River. Our page insert, it's a fact. If steel had not been invented in the late 1800s, some of today's strongest, longest, and tallest bridges would never have been built. Steel is made by adding carbon to melted iron. Steel is stronger, lighter, and longer lasting than iron. And we have another project. Be a bridge builder. Make your own arch bridge. Bend a piece of poster board into an arch. Stack heavy books at the ends as abutments to hold the arch in place. Now lay another piece of poster board across the tops of the books and the top of the arch to serve as the roadway. How many toy cars can your bridge hold? Can look at the diagram and think about doing this project on your own. Chapter 3 Movable Bridges Castle drawbridges were the first movable bridges. The bridge was raised to keep people out of the castle or lowered to let them in. Today's movable bridges allow tall ships to pass beyond the bridge. Movable bridges move up and down, swing from side to side, or split in the middle and lift. Some float on water. Traffic on a movable bridge must stop while the bridge moves. A swing bridge moves to allow a ship to pass on a river. It rotates around a point in the center of the bridge. Swing bridges take up a lot of room and can take a long time to finish changing positions. The vertical lift bridge has become more popular than the swing bridge. It works like an elevator. Part of the bridge roadway moves up and out of the way. A vertical lift bridge takes up less space than a swing bridge and it can rise up to different heights depending on the height of the ship passing under it. If you look at our picture, in this vertical lift bridge, the center span moves up and down much as an elevator does. And our page insert, it's a fact. 
One type of movable bridge floats on water. The beam of a pontoon bridge and its traffic are carried by floats. This pontoon bridge can be pulled open to allow ships to pass through the center of the bridge roadway. In the late 1800s, London, England was a growing city on the Thames River. Its streets and shipping ports were busy, yet the city had only one bridge. Pedestrians and vehicles had to travel hours out of their way to get to the bridge in order to cross the river. So work began on the design of Tower Bridge. More than 50 designs were considered before one was chosen. It had high overhead walkways for pedestrians and a roadway for vehicles. The roadway could be raised to allow ships to pass. More than 400 workers took eight years to build the bridge. Two piers were sunk into the bottom of the river to provide support. Steel was used for the framework of the walkway and piers. The roadway of Tower Bridge splits in the middle. Each side lifts up so that ships can pass through. Bridges that open this way are called bascule bridges. The word bascule comes from the French word for seesaw. If we look at our picture, the 800-foot tower bridge was completed in 1894. We can see the different parts of this bridge. We can see the piers, the roadway, the walkway, and the span. In our page insert, be a bridge builder. Make your own movable bridge. First, create a beam bridge with poster board and cans. Tape the poster board to the cans for support. Then, cut the poster board roadway across the center and bend it upward near each pier or can. Attach string to the roadway to open the bridge. That's another project you could complete if you want. Chapter 4. Suspension Bridges In a suspension bridge, the roadway is attached to cables that hang from above. These cables run upward to larger cables that are attached to massive towers. The towers support the bridge. The suspension design is especially good for an area where earthquakes occur. Because the bridge can sway and move, it's less likely to be damaged by the shock of an earthquake. The Akashi Kakio Bridge in Kobe, Japan is a long and beautiful suspension bridge. Earthquakes often strike Kobe and the surrounding area. The bridge was completed in 1998. The Akashi Kakio Bridge is now the longest and tallest suspension bridge in the world. The longest single span is 6,527 feet. If we look at our picture, we can see the Akashi Kakio Bridge is a suspension bridge, and we can see the cables, the roadway, and the towers. And our page insert, be a bridge builder. Make your own suspension bridge. Use empty paper towel tubes as the bridge towers. Tape them to a table so that they do not fall over. Cut poster board to make a roadway between the towers. Tape heavy rope loosely between the towers on each side of the roadway. With the hole punch, make holes along each side of the poster board roadway. Tie one end of a piece of string through each hole. Tie the other ends to the strings of the heavy rope. So that's how you can make your own suspension bridge. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge across Puget, Puget Sound in Washington was designed to be very flexible turned out to be too flexible. On November 7, 1940, a storm with strong winds struck the bridge. The bridge twisted in the wind for hours. The violent twisting strained the bridge enough to make it collapse. Fortunately, no lives were lost in the collapse. And we, if we look at our pictures, these pictures show the violent twisting that eventually made the roadway of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge break apart and collapse. And it's a fact. New York City's Brooklyn Bridge is one of the world's most famous bridges. Designed in 1869 by John A. Roebling, the bridge was not completed until 1883. Building it was dangerous work. It cost the lives of 27 workers. One of the first to die was designer Roebling. He was killed in an accident during the final planning stages. His son, Washington Roebling, took over. Crews had to work underwater to build the foundations for the towers that supported the span. So the workers first sank watertight containers, called caissons, to the bottom of the river. These caissons provided a place for the crews to work underwater. Bridge builders worked long hours in caissons deep beneath the East River. Many suffered because the pressure around their bodies changed too quickly when they went in and out of the caissons. Some workers died. Caisson disease left Washington Roebling deaf and unable to walk. But he wouldn't give up work on the project. He supervised from his bedroom window in Brooklyn, where he could watch the bridge construction. His wife, Emily, gave orders to the workers for him. 
And we can see a picture of the Brooklyn Bridge and pictures of the workers building the Brooklyn Bridge. Chapter 5. Cable Stayed Bridges A cable stayed bridge is quite similar to a suspension bridge, but the cables attach the roadway directly to the towers. This is the newest type of bridge design. One of the most spectacular cable stayed bridges is the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in Tampa Bay, Florida. A cable stayed bridge has advantages over a suspension bridge built to cover the same distance. The cable stayed bridge will need less cable and it can be built quicker. Those advantages make a cable stayed bridge less expensive than a suspension bridge in most cases. Many people find that cable stayed bridges have a very striking modern look that makes them beautiful. And we can see in our picture, the supporting cables of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge reach directly down to the roadway from two tall piers. And we can see the towers, the cables, and the roadway. And our page insert, be a bridge builder. Make your own cable stayed bridge. Try the same general design as a suspension bridge. Use paper towel tubes as towers and poster board as the roadway. Attach supporting strings from the roadway directly to the towers. So you can see the diagram and maybe you can make your own cable stayed bridge. Conclusion. The Akashi Kakeo Bridge may seem quite unlike a log across the stream, yet both have the same essential features that make a bridge. Every bridge you have read about in this book has a roadway that carries traffic, a span, and a means of support. In the years since the first log across the stream was built, engineers have worked to make the span longer and longer. What will the future bring? It's a good guess that a bridge longer and taller than any we've seen so far will be constructed. In our page insert, point. Picture it. What do you think a bridge of the future will look like? Using the descriptions of the bridges you have read about, design a futuristic bridge. Share your design with the group. So take a few minutes, get a sheet of paper, and design your own bridge. I can't wait to see them. Finally, we have our glossary. Um, our glossary has all of our key vocabulary words. So make sure you can read over those. It shows you how to pronounce them and what page you can find them on. And finally, we're going to write in our science journal. Choose one of the following prompts to write about in your journal. Make drawings, charts, or other graphic features to help you organize your thoughts. So you're going to pick one of these three journal options. Number one, write about which type of bridge you would most want to help build. Make a list of questions you would ask a designer of this type of bridge. You're going to be making connections. Number two, Review the text. Explain what a span is and why spans differ depending on the type of bridge. We're going to summarize your information for that one. And number three, the author included dramatic photographs when showing the collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. What do you think is the author's purpose for including these photographs? What does she want the reader to understand? Here you're going to evaluate the author's purpose. Now that we've read Building Bridges by Kathy Fergang, we're going to take a closer look at our content vocabulary. You can find that on the front inside cover of your book, right here. And we're going to go over those words one more time. So our content vocabulary, abutment, bridge, hasten, engineer, force, pier, and span. Remember, you can find those words in the front inside cover of your book. And like we talked about before, if you aren't sure what those words mean and you need a little help with it, you can always look at your glossary, which is on page 23 of your book. So look over those words, make sure you know what they are, make sure you know what they are in context of your book, and practice those a few times. If we go back to page five of our book, we had our insert be a bridge builder. We're gonna try to do ours. It tells us to build our own bridge. We're gonna take two cans to make our piers. And then it tells us to take a piece of poster board to be the beam. Well, I don't have a poster board, but I do have an envelope. So we're gonna try this. Oh, well, if I can make it stay. This should be a little closer together. All right, then it tells us 
how, well, ask, how many toy cars can the bridge hold? Well, I don't have toy cars, but I have dinosaurs. So let's see how many dinosaurs our bridge can hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, oops, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so about nine dinosaurs. So then our book tells us to place a third can to be a third pier. And now we'll try again. Let's see if we can get more than nine dinosaurs on our bridge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's looking promising. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, it might not follow guys, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, I don't think our bridge is going to fall. 31. 32. 33. 34. 35. 36. 37. 38. Oh, there we go. 37 dinosaurs can fit on our bridge with three peers. So I'd like to see you do your own experiment with bridges. Bridges are engineering feats and architectural works of art. Just think, maybe one day some of you guys will become bridge engineers.